Hey everybody and welcome to my short presentation NFT WTF, a short guide on NFTs. So today I'll talk about NFTs and first of all we'll take a bit of a closer look at the term NFT and what it actually stands for. Then we'll dive into some of the concepts, some of the technical concepts around NFTs and in the end we'll talk about some of the interesting use cases. So, what do NBA video short clips, Nyancat, and this huge JPEG of JPEGs have in common? They have all sold for millions of US dollars as NFTs. So, what are NFTs and how do they work? I will try to explain that over the next couple of minutes. NFT stands for Non-Fungible Token. Easy, right? I'm sure all of you know what that means. Well, no, at least when I first heard that term, I had no idea what it meant. And so let's take a closer look, especially at the word fungible. And it turns out it's a term from economics, and we will just take that and replace it with interchangeable. So we have non-interchangeable token. And I'll try to illustrate this a bit further with the help of an example. So a couple of years ago, my son was born and I went to the store and I bought a teddy bear. And in the store there were 20 of the same teddy bears. I didn't care which one specifically I took. So one was just like the other, they were fungible. And now, four years later, my son, you can see him here, he has played a lot with his teddy bear. He, the teddy bear has gotten some wear and tear and it has gotten unique. It has gotten non-fungible and unlike all the other teddy bears in the, te in the, in the store. So, to give you an example that's a bit closer to the crypto world, um, one Bitcoin is fungible. It doesn't matter whether you own this specific Bitcoin or another Bitcoin, it's all the same. This is not the case for NFTs. And also something like the Mona Lisa, non-fungible, non-interchangeable. So, we've got the first two letters covered, NF, I hope that's clear. And so, what does the T stand for? It stands for token, but what exactly does it mean in this context? So to explain this, I'll have to dive into some of the technical concepts that surround NFTs. So a token exists on a blockchain. And in its core, a blockchain is just a public list of all transactions that have happened with tokens. And by doing this, it keeps track of who owns how many tokens. And tokens can be any cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or Ethereum, and those are fungible ones. Or it can also be an NFT, and those are the non-fungible non tokens. So you might think, okay, why do I need a fancy blockchain to keep track of my transactions? My bank does that every day, or I can do it in an Excel spreadsheet, right? Um, well, no, the core value of a blockchain is that it is decentralized. The history is immutable, so nobody can change it after the fact. And by doing that, it becomes trustless. You do not have to trust a central authority like a bank or a government to do your accounting correctly. And this is also where a lot of the value of NFTs and cryptocurrencies essentially come from. So um, another concept regarding um, blockchains is the smart contract. A smart contract is a public script which lives on the blockchain and it just consists of a bunch of methods that users and other smart contracts can interact with to either read state from the blockchain or to um, mutate, uh, manipulate state. For instance, if you do a transaction, you manipulate the state if you transfer tokens from owner A to owner B. And an interesting fact about um, smart con contracts is that they are, the code is immutable once you deploy it to, this, to the blockchain. So that means you have to get the code right the first time. So good luck with that. And regarding um, the blockchain and NFTs and smart contracts, there for Ethereum, there is a token standard. It's called the ERC721 token standard. And it's just a set of agreed upon methods that a smart contract has to have to qualify as a NFT smart contract. And those methods are things like an owner off method where you can um, get the owner of a specific token or a mint method which creates new tokens or a transfer method which transfers tokens from owner A to owner B. And there are different token standards for different blockchains and they do not have to be um, compatible. Often they're not actually. 
So NFTs are tokens on a blockchain and they hold information. They hold information about um, its owner. They have a unique token ID and they have information about the issuing smart contract, which is the smart contract that created the token. And they have a token URI. And this token URI and the non-fungibility of these NFTs, they give rise to many very interesting use cases and applications. For instance, you could have ownership of digital assets. So if you own an NFT and that NFT your, and, and that token URI points to a digital asset on the web, then this NFT can represent ownership of that asset. And that can be an image, audio, code, whatever you like, really. Same goes with physical assets. If you have a physical asset that can be represented by a unique ID, then you can mint this ID as the token URI into the token. Then it's fixed on the blockchain and it can the NFT can represent ownership. It can be transferred, it can be sold, you can really do anything, whatever you like. Other, other use cases are ticket systems, for instance. You can have um, NFTs as tickets. So if you own an NFT, you get access to an online event or even offline event, doesn't really matter. Or really any type of key that you can imagine um, NFTs can be used for. Okay, so because um, at Beyond Mars Art, we work on an art marketplace and it's closely related to digital asset ownership, I want to take a bit of a closer look at that topic. So as I explained, NFTs hold a URI um, to a digital asset. However, there's a problem. If this URI is a regular URL, the actual content behind this URL can easily be replaced by the server admin. So for instance, you have a, a URL that goes mywebsite.com slash cat.jpg. However, at some point in the future, this might be replaced with a very different cat, an excavator. And this is not what you want with NFTs. You want to have it immutable and you always want your NFT to point to the exact same thing that you that initially did. And there's a solution for that. It's called IPFS, AKA the permanent web. Oh my God, one of, another one of those acronyms, NFT, IPFS. No, just stick with me here for a second. So um, IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System and is a, it is a content address peer-to-peer -peer storage network. And what exactly does that mean, content address? Um, the IPFS URI contains a hash of the content of a file. And as you might know, a hash is always exactly the same with the same input. So you cannot have a different URI for the exact same image, or you cannot have the same URI for different files. And so this guarantees that the NFT really always points to the exact same digital asset. And yeah, no more confusing cats for excavators. That's a bonus. Okay, so in summary, um, NFTs are unique. They're non-fungible. They are decentralized and they can hold a token URI, which can point to, point to digital assets, physical assets, really anything you like. And by this, uh, this non-fungibility and this token URI, there arise many very interesting use cases. And uh, yeah. I hope that you will agree and thank you for your attention and if you'd like to talk about this topic a bit further you can hit me up at this email and thanks. <laughs>